Hey everybody, sorry we're running a couple minutes late here. Didn't realize that the stream wasn't gonna work from the browser that I was using, but welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm Caleb, I'm one of the Porchlight, Plan Porchlight Plans crew. Um, happy to be here with you all today and share a couple of space saving tips. Um, so really today we wanna to talk, just talk about um, how we can embrace living small um, it's not only the more environmentally responsible way to live, you keep your footprint down, um, that's definitely more earth friendly, but it's also the more financially responsible way, especially if you're building a new home. Um, like Katie mentioned last time, we're seeing anywhere from $150 to $300 a square foot um, as the cost of residential construction, um, depending on where you live at in the country and the level of finishes that you choose for your home. So the really only way to keep your budget down is to um, keep your square footage down. And so we're gonna talk about three different tips today and then a couple different products that we really love um, for space savings. So jumping right in, let's talk about some tips. Um, the first tip that we have is to capitalize on nooks and crannies. This is really essential. So especially if you're trying to keep your square footage down, every square inch of space is really gonna matter and really gonna count. So you can capitalize on nooks and crannies, especially by um, investing in some built-ins. So we love built-in shelving, window benches, recessing cabinets, and um, other things behind a toilet or over a sink. Um, there's a ton of ways to do it, but really these built-ins, capitalizing on these nooks and crannies help you to hide your clutter, um, to increase your storage, and also to add some charm to your house. Of course, those Airbnbs that you visit that are these really amazing turn-of-the-century homes that were built in the late um, 18, early 1900s, they have so much charm because of all the attention to detail and the craftsmanship um, and all these little nooks and crannies that they really uh, incorporate and maximize. So that's our first tip. Second, uh, we really encourage you to embrace modular furniture. Think about things like pegboards. Pegboards are all over Pinterest right now. Um, Ikea just released some amazing new pegboards. Um, they're really fun. They're a way to add texture, to add some life to a space that's otherwise pretty bland. So they can serve both as decor, and also as a very practical thing. Um, so we definitely love those. Other things that we've seen a lot of is modular furniture. Um, think about in your living room, can you double a table um, as a seat? So instead of investing in a nice glass coffee table, do you have a couple of 16 by 16 inch wooden cubes that you can move around um, and really use those uh, to provide ancillary seating and also a table space when you need it? Um, additionally, um, yeah, you can go to the extreme of thinking a Murphy bed if you're in a really, really small space. There are a lot of cool companies out there that are thinking about um, how do we do micro apartments? How do we do three to 500 square foot living spaces really effectively, especially with the tiny house movement? Um, so there's a lot of great products out there coming onto the market that really double up um, and serve double duty, which we'll talk about in a minute. The third way, the third tip that we have for living small is trim the fat, especially when you're going um, to build a new home and you have a lot of control over what we call the program of the home, the different contents of the rooms. Um, think about the function that you need, not necessarily a list of rooms. So if you go into it with an open mind, you're willing to approach your new home build in a really creative way, instead of saying, here's the function that we have to, uh, or instead of saying, here's all the rooms that we need, say, what are the functions that we need? We need a place to eat. We need a place to cook. We need a place to sleep. Um, there are a couple of case studies that we're going to post in the blog. Um, the one specifically that I'm thinking of is the glass house by Philip Johnson. Um, it's completely open. The only room in the entire house that's partitioned off is the bathroom, because it's the only one that really needed the full privacy in this house. So. Just think about what's the function of the spaces um, rather than do we need to have a 12 by 12 bedroom with four walls that go up to the ceiling. Um, think about where are the areas that you can combine, um, combine uses based on the function. So now let's talk about a couple of our favorite products right now. We are huge IKEA evangelists here at Porchlight Plans. We love IKEA and we just got an IKEA a couple of years ago in the Kansas City area. So. That's a pretty exciting thing. Um, Ikea makes some great shelving systems, the Eket system and the Ivar. Um, those are two of my favorite products from Ikea as a whole, and they just happen to be really great modular shelving systems. Muto is another more high-end Scandinavian company, and they have this amazing shelving system called the Stacked, 
system and they have closed doors and drawers um, as well as just open flexible shelving. So we're huge fans of those three shelving products and would definitely encourage you to check them out. We will post links to those on our Pinterest board um, and I'll send uh, that in the comments afterwards so that you all can check that out. Other things that we love, we love medicine cabinets. Medicine cabinets are back in force. Uh, I think that for a while there were no good medicine cabinets out there um, that were really modern and had clean minimal lines, even frameless mirrors. And so we're seeing a lot of those, especially the company Roburn. They make some amazing mirrors and medicine cabinets and they even have integrated lighting into a lot of them so they can serve double duty in that way as well. And save you some money of having to buy an additional lighting fixture for your bathroom. So we love medicine cabinets, we love Roburn. Another thing that we're seeing and this is probably one of the most amazing products out there, I think, or a couple of products, Kohler, Franke, um, a lot of sink companies are creating kitchen sinks that serve as a cutting board um, that's built in, and they have um, different attachments that you can add to the sink and really um, use, uh, use the full potential of the sink, use it as a counter space when you don't need to be running water, use it as a place to store your freshly washed veggies and fruit as you're prepping. Um, and so they have some really amazing products. Again, links to those products will be on our Pinterest board and definitely encourage you to check those out, especially if you're working with a small footprint in your kitchen, a small amount of counter space. Using your sink with a cutting board attachment that fits in it is an amazing way to save space. Um, well, the final product that I really wanted to talk about, um, Samsung recently launched this amazing new TV that I'm very obsessed with. Um, and it's called the Frame TV. So the Frame TV is really amazing because it looks like a piece of art when it's not in use. So it slips perfectly into your gallery wall. People that are over at your house will never, ever, ever know that you have a TV in plain sight on your wall um, because it blends so seamlessly and it actually shows different pieces of art. You can either show your own photos or they have a selected gallery of artwork that you can um, cast to the TV um, when it's not in use as a TV. So we love the Samsung Frame frame TV. Um, we wish that we could afford one. <laughs> They're around $2,000, but really amazing product and definitely will save some space on your wall uh, by serving double duty as a place for artwork. Um, so with that, we just wanted to talk about a couple of case studies really quickly and we'll have more detail on the blog, but um, and there are links on the Pinterest board, but um, some places to check out for inspiration of small living. The Rolling Huts by Olson Kundig are amazing. They're these little 200 square foot vacation properties that you can rent. Um, they're fantastic. They have those modular cube seating table um, and bed ideas that we were talking about. Uh, we also love the Chuckanut Residence by Miller Hole Architects. They have these amazing large windows, tall ceilings, and built-ins that make the 1,400 square foot feet of this home feel so much bigger. Um, so really thinking about how you can maximize, like Katie talked about on Tuesday, how you can maximize those floor-to-ceiling windows to really connect the inside and the outside of a home. And that will make the space feel and appear a lot larger than it is. Uh, I also mentioned The Glass House earlier by Philip Johnson. It's an amazing, amazing property. Um, it's one of the classic mid-century modern um, just homes that was designed and uh, we definitely recommend checking that out. Floor to ceiling glass again, no partitions except for the bathroom um, and it just really engages well with that internal external relationship with nature to make it feel so much bigger than it really is. Um, another really amazing property um, from the 50s, the Bachman Wilson House by Frank Lloyd Wright. You can actually go tour this home. They reconstructed it on the site of Crystal Bridges Museum in Arkansas, and it is fantastic. Um, Frank Lloyd Wright has this meticulous control of the entire project. He designed custom furniture for each of the homes that he did. He controlled every single detail. So we are huge, huge fans of that property um, just for the way that it, again, capitalizes on the nooks and crannies and really incorporates built-in um, elements to increase storage and then also provide area for display. And finally, um, the Eames House by Charles and Ray Eames. This is technically known as case study house number eight, I believe is what they called it, but this was where they lived um, and had their studio for a portion of their lives. It's in the Palisades area um, near Los Angeles and it's really, really fantastic. It's a brilliant example of just paring things down to the bare bones, um, really understanding the, um, how do we have modular walls? How do we separate space 
um, when we need it to be separated, but then also leave it open to feel more spacious and to feel uh, more comfortable as we're there on the day to day. So those are some of our favorite projects. Again, check those out on our Pinterest board, look for our blog on Monday. Um, and that's what we have for today. Those are some space saving tips for you. So hi, Jared. Hi, Katie. <laughs> hi, Suzanne. <laughs> Good to see you all. Um, hope that that was some helpful tips and we look forward to sharing more with you. Um, if you have any questions for us, send us a message, um, chat with us on our Instagram story. We'd love to answer questions throughout the day and have a fabulous weekend all. See ya.